Hello, in the following video we will see some of the most interesting features and changes presented in Shopify Editions Summer of 2025. In case you're not familiar with this, twice a year Shopify releases a bunch of features in a batch in an event they call Shopify Editions. There is one around the middle of the year, which is the Summer Editions, and there is one around the end of the year, which is the Winter Editions. So without further ado, let's dive into what's new. So now, let's click on Open over here, and this will redirect us to this page over here listing all of the updates as we scroll. Starting with changes in the team editor as we can see over here. This adds a bunch of quality of life improvements. For example, here they are talking about team blocks. We already saw that in a video in the channel. I will link that in the video description. But this is basically a new way of building your Shopify teams. This can be worked alongside sections, although Team blocks are quite more flexible than what sections are. They allow for things such as nesting blocks in multiple levels of depth and reusing the same block across multiple sections. Then we see over here that Shopify has created these 10 new themes. They are all free and they are based on team blocks. You can see them in the Shopify App Store or in the Shopify Team Store over here by clicking on the link and then you can install them in your store and start trying them out. And it is now possible to generate blocks and team content by using Generative AI. It is to be seen how effective this will be, but it is worth trying out as this feature has just been released and Shopify is showcasing it front and center over here in the page. You can see here that you can generate team content as well in a similar manner to how it is being showcased over here. There are also a bunch of improvements made to the team editor, which you can see listed over here, and we can also play this video here to see a lot three of them. Some of the most interesting ones are categories for blocks and sections, so you will be now able to better organize your blocks and sections. This is especially useful for teams that have a lot of sections or blocks going on as it will improve the experience of merchants working with that team. Then there is the AI code generation, which we saw a second ago. There is the simplified sidebar with conditional settings, which we saw in a previous video. And what this will let you do is to show or hide settings conditionally, depending on certain conditions being met. Like for example, if the value of a setting is set to true, then show a bunch of related settings. But if it is set to false, then hide them because it is irrelevant for the merchant at that state to be able to use them as the setting that toggles them on and off is turned off. If you want to learn more about that, there is a video in the channel already where I'm covering that. I will be leaving that in the video description. Next, there is distant call the entries in the card. This is not directly related to the team editor, but they are showing it here for some reason. However, this is quite interesting because now you will be able to apply these con codes directly from your card drawer without needing to install third-party apps. And this is possible from the card API. So over here, from the update endpoint, there is now a new discount property, which we can see over here, that lets you update the discounts in the card. So you can apply a discount just by sending this property to this endpoint, this discount property over here with the discount code that you want to apply. You can send multiple discounts separated by a comma, as you can see in this example, and you can even remove all of the discounts in the, in the card by just sending an empty string to the same endpoint in the discount property. Next, there are some updates to Sidekick, Shopify's AI assistant. Now it is able to speak 20 languages, it can generate images, and you can even have a voice chat with it. I have not used Sidekick that much, so I can offer insights into how useful this will be, but it looks like Shopify is putting a lot of effort into improving it, so it's something to keep an eye on. Next, we have some updates made to checkout. So let's scroll down here, and the first one being that checkout now loads a bit faster. Shopify is also adding a guide to upgrade to the new thank you and order status page systems in case your store has not created to that yet. So click on this. You will see the guide. In this case, my store has already been integrated to the system, so I just see this message. But if yours hasn't been upgraded, then you should see a guide over here on what are the steps free. Also, very interestingly, 
Shopify has improved the Apple Pay support. This can be big if you are selling in a market where the majority of the customers have Apple devices. And there is also something else that will be unlocked on June 12th. You can get notified about that by clicking in this button and putting your email in this pop-up if you want. Next, we have the changes described in this global section over here. The first one being that Shopify payments is now available in these 16 mini countries. And as you keep scrolling over here, you can see another improvement made to Apple Pay. So now it is possible to accept Apple Pay subscriptions in all countries that use Shopify payments. There is also an improvement made to customer accounts as it now supports markets. So this will improve the experience of your store's customers when they log into their account. And also the cookies banner can now be shown in the checkout page as well. So if you click on this, it will take you to the settings screen in your store where you can enable or disable this. In this case, to enable it at checkout, you will need to scroll to the bottom and click over here, but see this warning over here that it might reduce checkout conversion rates. Next, we have the marketing section and we see over here that it is now possible to create a single discount that can be applied across products, orders and shipping. So if you wanted to discount the order by 20% and the shipping by 20% before, you will need to have to separate discounts and allow them to be combined. Now it is possible to do this with a single discount. But the caveat is that you will need the help of an app to do this. So over here you can explore apps that have already implemented this feature, such as these ones. Or if you are on a Shopify Plus store, you can build your own. To build your own, you will need the new discounts API for Shopify functions which unifies the product discount function, order discount function, and shipping discount function into a single function. I have a video in the channel where I show you how to use it, and I will leave that in the video description as well. There is also a new knowledge base app for Shopify, so if you click on this, you will be able to install this in your store. This app will let you provide better answers to customers who request information about your store through an AI service like ChatGPT or Cloud. And you can also see what information customers are requesting about your store in these services. The app is completely free, as you can see over here, and you can try it out simply by clicking on this link from the editions page. And it is now possible to disable the buy again button in customer account pages. Some time ago, I received a comment asking about this in the channel, and now it is available. So if you want to disable it, now you can. Next, let's jump directly to operations. And there is a new app presented over here that is worth discussing. That app is this one over here to import data from other platforms. The app is also entirely free and you can see here all the platforms it currently supports, which are Square, WooCommerce, Etsy, Wix, Amazon, eBay, and some others. You can get the app simply by clicking on this link. It is made by Shopify, as you can see and you can try it out in your store right away. And now let's scroll down to see more changes focused on developers, starting with the next gen developer platform. These are a set of changes made to improve the experience of developing apps in Shopify. You can watch that walkthrough by clicking on this play button over here, but we'll also see some of the most interesting things added in a moment. It is to be noted that at the time I am recording this, these changes are not yet widely available. So if you click on this read depth docs, you're going to see this banner over here telling you that it is not yet generally available, but you can submit a request to get early access by filling this form. And now if you scroll down, we can see what has been added or what will be added. Starting over here with developer stores for every Shopify plan. So now you can test your app in dev stores with any plan, including basic, growth, advanced, and plus. Previously, if you wanted to create a plus store for development, you will need to have access to a plus sandbox, which is this thing over here. Plus partners in the Shopify partner program can create sandbox stores for Shopify plus and use them to learn how to build on Shopify plus. However, to be able to do that, you will need to be a plus partner already and that is not something that everyone can easily do. So once this is released, you will be able to create your own dev store that is on the plus plan 
to test your app accordingly. And even though this is not yet widely available, we can click on this link over here and scroll down to see what the process will be like. So this is the new Partners dashboard once it is released. And over here, this is the screen for creating a development store. And you can see over here that you can select what Shopify plan you want that store to be in. And you can get confirmation over here of all of the plans that are available, basic, growth, advanced, and plus. You will also be able to build your app without using tunnels. So before, if you were running the npm from dev command when developing a Shopify app, you will see that it creates a Cloudflare tunnel. Now what Shopify is adding is support for doing this directly using localhost without having to rely on Cloudflare, which sometimes could be down or could present all sorts of issues. By using localhost, you remove one moving piece from the equation and the process of developing your app becomes simpler. There is also now an MCP server for Shopify.dev, so if you click on this, you are going to see the instructions on how to install this. This can be useful if you have integrated AI in your development workflow with tools like Cursor or Cloud Code, as it will let those tools better communicate with Shopify's documentation to provide better answers. There is also now declarative custom data definitions. So if your app is using meta objects or meta fields, you are now going to be able to define the structure directly in the shopify.app.toml file. Beforehand, you will have needed to create the definitions programmatically, but now Shopify can take care of that. Also, if you are creating POS extensions, now they will be able to access Shopify data without you needing to create your own backend. Previously, if you wanted to access Shopify data, you will need to create a backend that makes the admin API calls and then sends that to your extension. Now you are going to be able to make those calls directly from the extension. And also you can see over here that Polaris is receiving an update. So it will now be using web components and you will be able to use the same components across admin, checkout and customer accounts extensions. So in the current system, the Polaris components look like this. If you are building an app to be embedded in the Shopify admin, you will use the components listed over here. If you are using an app that is going to be embedded in the checkout page, you are going to be using the components from here. If you are going to be building an app that is going to be embedded as an admin extension, you will use these components. And if you are building an app that is going to be embedded in the customer account page, then you will use the components from here. All of these components are React components. And now if we go back to the editions page over here, we are going to be seeing that Shopify is migrating these to be web components, which are framework agnostic, meaning that you will be able to use them with any framework that you like, or even without any framework at all. And now let's click over here to read the documentation. And the first thing you can see is that this is a release candidate meaning that the stable version, as of right now, is the one using React that we saw a moment ago. And you can see once again over here that this will work with any frameworks that you are using, not just with React. And by clicking over here on Polaris Web Components, you are going to see a list of the new components that have been added. If you go back and do the same for admin UI extensions, for example, you can see a similar list. Something else to be noted is that this version of the Shopify API is the release candidate for October of 2025. At the time I am recording this video, we are in May of 2025, so this release is at least five months away. And if you click on any of these components, you can see over here an example of how the component will be used. You can see that it is not being used anymore like React components are, which are used in normally Pascal case. Instead, it is using kebab case, meaning all words in lowercase separated by a dash. And then over here, you can see all of the different properties in supports. These components can also emit events, and you can see how to register for those events by clicking on this link over here and checking this documentation. Going back to the additions page, we see over here that we also have a storefront web components which will let you embed 
components directly from your Shopify store into any page, even if it is a non-Shopify page. So if you click over here on try it, you can see an example after this finishes loading. And there it is. So if you scroll, you can see that these are web components and you embed this in any site and you're going to be rendering this card over here, which you will be able to customize through CSS. But the customer or the person visiting this page will be able to interact with your store even if they are not directly in your store's page. And you can see over here the documentation for this. And you can also see a playground to see this in action right away. So you can see that this is a non Shopify site. And over here, this script is being added to include the storefront web components. And then things like this, this Shopify context web component, is used to start rendering all of this experience that you can see over here. So if I click on quit that, I'm adding this component to the cart, this product to the cart, and then I can go to checkout and I would be able to pay for this product even though I added it to, the, to my cart from a page that wasn't my store stage. By reading the code, you get a better idea of how this is working. So you have to wrap the code that will be interacting with your Shopify store in this Shopify context component over here. You tell it what type of data you want to access. So in this case, you want to access a collection and this is the handle of that collection. And over here, you can render an H1 and then use this special component to tell it that this is Shopify data and query the data you want from Shopify. And it will be rendered in data space. And if you keep scanning this code, you can get an idea of how this product cards and this add to cart is working. As all of the code for this page over here, it's in this left side tab. And from the documentation of this new API or new feature, you can see a quick summary that it lets you bring Shopify powered commerce capabilities to any website. You are going to be able to display products, showcase collections, and offer a checkout, all with a few lines of embedded HTML. If we keep scrolling down, we can see that once again, there are discount codes in the cart. We saw that a moment ago. And there is also a new skeleton theme. This is a very simple theme, which you can use to then start building your own theme. It can be a simpler and less opinionated starting point than what something like Dawn would normally be. And we also have here this bull data management in the Shopify CLI. So this is useful if you have, for example, a development environment or a staging environment and a production environment, and you want to migrate data from one environment to the other. With these commands that are currently in beta, you're going to be able to copy the store's content, currently only products, product variants, product media, product metafields, and product metafield definitions are supported. You're going to be able to copy them or export them and import them in between stores. Previously, you will have needed an app to do this, but now if the data you are trying to migrate falls in these data types over here, then you will be able to do that on your own from the Shopify CLI. And that does it for this video. There are plenty of other features I didn't get to cover here, but I will leave the link for this page in the video description so you can go over everything yourself as well, as maybe something that didn't catch my attention could still be useful for you. Let me know down in the comments which features you will be using from here, and if you'd like to see a video of anything presented in this instance of Shopify editions. And with that being said, if you found this video helpful, remember to like and subscribe for more Shopify-related content, and I will see you all in the next one.